story of the mind reader. There was once a village in the country of the king of the coastlands called Martika, and one day sixty monks came to it seeking alms. These monks had been given a meditation subject by the Buddha leading to Arahatship, and they were now on their way to find a suitable place to reside. The headman was called Martika, but it was his mother who saw the monks and provided them with seats and arranged servings of rice porridge with all manner of choice flavorings. When they had finished their meal, she asked them, Reverend sirs, where do you desire to go? They replied, to some pleasant place, great lay disciple. When she understood they were seeking a place for residence for the period of the rains retreat, she was deeply moved and said to them, if the noble monks reside here for three months, I will make all necessary arrangements for their stay. The monks consented, seeing that with her assistance, they might be able to realize the path and become free from suffering. Martika's mother supervised the construction of a monastery to serve as their place of residence and presented it to them, and the monks accepted. The monks then met together and considered their situation. They said, given a living Buddha had provided them with a meditation subject suitable for each one of them to achieve full enlightenment, it was incumbent upon them to lead a life free from heedlessness. So they agreed to live apart during their striving if, however, one became sick, he should come to the monastery and strike a bell, at which point they would all come together and provide a remedy for the one who was sick. And with that agreed, the monks went to their respective quarters and remained practising in solitude. One day shortly afterwards, the mother of Matika came with offerings of food to the monastery. When she arrived, none of the monks could be seen and she asked some of the local men where the monks were, and was told by one of the men who knew about the monks' arrangements that if she rang the bell, the monks would assemble. So Martika's mother rang the bell, and the monks in their separate quarters all heard it, and rose from their meditation seats, and made their way through the forest to the monastery. When she saw them approach one at a time from different directions, Martika's mother thought that they must have had a quarrel with each other. She asked them, Have you had a quarrel, Reverend Sirs? They replied, No, indeed, great lay disciple, we have not quarrelled. Each of us is sitting in our own cell engaged in the practice of meditation. What do you mean, Reverend Sirs? What is this practice of meditation? They replied, we take the subject of meditation given to us by a living Buddha. We review and reflect on the 32 parts of the body to the point of gaining a clear conception of it and thus gain insight into the decay and death inherent in the body. Martika's mother was very much stirred by what she was told. She asked with some trepidation, Reverend Sirs, are you alone permitted to review and reflect on the 32 parts of the body, or are we permitted to do this also? This practice is forbidden to none, lay disciple, replied the monks. Well then, teach me also the 32 parts of the body. Very well, lay disciple, said the monks, learn them. So saying, they taught her all. Straight away, Martika's mother applied herself to the meditation practice she had been given striving with increasing skill and diligence to master the reflection of the 32 parts of the body and developing understanding. So successful was her practice that she gained penetrating insight in advance of those monks and attained the first three paths and fruits of enlightenment. By the same paths she also won the four supernatural powers and the higher faculties. Arising from the bliss of the paths and fruits, she surveyed the area with supernormal vision and asked herself, At what time did my sons attain this state? Immediately she became aware that the resident monks were still in the bonds of greed, hatred and delusion and had not yet, by the practice of calm meditation, induced spiritual insight. Then she pondered the question, Do my sons possess the requisite spiritual development 
to attain arahatship, or do they not? And she perceived they did. Then she pondered the question, do they have the necessary companions or have they not? And she perceived that they had. Then she pondered the question, do they have the appropriate dwelling places or do they not? And she perceived that they did. Then she pondered the question, do they have the proper food or do they not? And she perceived that they did not have the proper food. So from that time, by defining the food necessary for the monks to make progress, she provided them with hard and soft food with a variety of choice flavours for their daily meal. After eating the food she provided, the monks' minds became tranquil, and as a result of the tranquility of mind, they attained arahatship together with their supernormal powers. And having attained arahatship, the thought occurred to them, this great female lay disciple has indeed been our support. Had she not divined our need, and had we not received the appropriate food, we would not have attained the paths and fruits. So they paid their respects to the great female lay disciple, saying, Lay disciple, we desire to see the teacher. And so she bade them farewell. When the monks returned to Savati, they went to the teacher and paid their respects. The teacher said, Evidently you have fared well, monks, have had plenty to eat and not been troubled on the score of food. And the monks replied that they had indeed fared well, and related how the mother of Martika had known the course of their thoughts and determined the most appropriate food to provide them each day. A certain monk heard his brothers praise the virtues of the mother of Martika and determined that he too would go to her village to develop the path. So he went to the teacher and obtained a subject for meditation and journeyed to the village. When he was approaching the village, it was already late and he wished that somebody would have swept the monastery before he arrived, as he was very tired. The female lay disciple sitting in her house became aware of his thoughts and sent a man to sweep the floor and prepare the monastery. And then the monk arrived and saw the monastery was already made ready and thought, well, it would be good if there was some sweetened water to drink. Straight away the female lay disciple sent the water to him. On the following day he awoke early, and into his mind came the thought of receiving some rice porridge for his meal. The female lay disciple discerned his wish and sent him the food. The monk thought, this lay disciple has sent me every single thing I have thought of. I would like to meet her, would that she present herself to me in person. And so she read his thoughts once more, and complied with his wish, presenting herself to him and paid her respects. He said, Lay disciple, your name is Mother of Martika? Yes, dear son. You know the thoughts of another? Many other monks who know the thoughts of another, dear son. I am not asking of anyone else, I am asking of you. But the Mother of Martika avoided answering the question. However, the monk could not escape the conclusion that she had this ability and became unsettled and embarrassed by this knowledge. So he told the mother of Martika he was leaving. She knew he would benefit from staying and asked him to continue to reside there, but he declined and went back to the teacher. When he returned, the Buddha asked him why he was no longer residing at the place of the mother of Martika. He said that this lay disciple undoubtedly had supernormal powers and could read his mind. And if she read his mind, she would see all sorts of defiled thoughts arising and may be disgusted by him and throw him out. So the Buddha said to him, Monk, you should guard just one thing. Just guard your thoughts alone, for thoughts are hard to guard. Do not concern yourself with anything else. So saying, he pronounced the following stanza. Wonderful indeed it is to restrain the mind, so difficult to restrain, ever swift and flitting here and there. It is good to tame the mind. A tamed mind brings happiness. And so the monk returned to the village of the mother of Martika. She saw him coming, and with her supernormal power could see that he had been admonished by the teacher and had been ordered to come back to this place. She once again prepared the most appropriate food for this monk. He settled down 
and turned his attention to the meditation subject he had been given by the Buddha. With these conditions in place, within a few days striving with diligence, he attained arahatship, and with that attainment he knew what had to be done was done, that there would be no future rebirth for him. As he passed the following days in the bliss of the paths and fruits, he thought to himself, This great female disciple has been a support to me. By her assistance I have gained release from the round of suffering. And he wondered, as he had passed innumerable times from one existence to another, whether she had been of assistance to him in previous lives. Now the number of times we have been reborn stretches back infinitely to a beginningless past and the number of lifetimes are beyond measure. In reviewing his many past lives, the monk could find 99 lives in which he and this woman were man and wife. But to his horror, he saw that in each life she had betrayed him and had connived in his murder. Sitting in her home, the mother of Martika could see the monk had attained arahatship, but had also reviewed these 99 past lives. She could see that in the most recent life, the hundredth time that they were man and wife, she had been of great assistance to him and saved his life. So through the power of supernormal audition, she spoke to the monk, and he saw in this hundredth life she had saved him. And with this recollection he was filled with joy, and reviewing the paths and fruits, he departed his body and entered Parinibbana.